About two or three weeks ago, I finally got through one of the worst networking problems I ever experienced. This was absolutely terrible. We'll start with uh, just the basic setup here. The cable modem supplied by my cable company. This is a replacement one. Router, it's just a Netgear, you know, wireless N or some crap like that. Uh, cable modem, it comes out of there and goes into this internet traffic cop thing that is actually a metal case. You can hit the stop button, it'll light up in red and stop all interwebs to the house, but it stays defaulted to green. It's powered by USB. I actually just have an adapter, a 5 volt adapter with a USB plug on it to run that, and uh, I've never used it, it's just here. Uh, anyway, that goes into the router. The router has four ports on it. You can see things blinking away there. Uh, ports 1, 2, and 3 are the three servers that are here. And port 4 is an uplink to a TrendNet 24 port switch. So the problem I was having was intermittent. It was random and no amount of my trying anything would be able to figure it out. Basically, here's what happened. Everything is working fine. The machine I was using at the time happened to be running Windows XP. The icon in the tray would say it's connected, it would stay that way, but I would have no internet access. If I try to go to any site, it wouldn't work regardless of the browser, regardless of the uh, time and date settings which were correct, and everything else, everything is 100%. It was just working and would just randomly cut out out of nowhere. If I go to a command line and do an ipconfig slash release and ipconfig slash renew, it would release and renew the IP address. It would give me exactly the same IP address back and then the internet would work again. That might last anywhere from an hour down to 10 seconds then I would have to do IP config release, IP config renew for it to work again. So this actually happened, um, oh, maybe about a year ago, and uh, I swapped the router out, and that seemed to solve the problem right after I did that. So everything was all done with that. But then the problem came back, so I said, oh, I guess this router is crapping out on me, so I'll need a new one of those. Anyway, I have a replacement or a spare router right here, this old Linksys wireless G1. It just sits here to be called into service uh, should it need to be, and that's pretty much it. Um, last time when the router, when I thought it was the router that was the problem, um, and I swapped this modem in, uh, I'm sorry, this router in, uh, the problem also vanished. And I got the new router and it was working fine and that. So this time, after putting this uh, router in, I had exactly the same problem once again. Now, another interesting thing that was happening with this is it only seemed to affect Windows XP machines. All three of the servers are running Windows XP. That includes the Shoutcast server, so it kept logging error after error after error after error. But during this entire process, whenever it would go out, I would always have internal network connectivity. If I wanted to copy files from one machine to another over the network, it would just work without any problem. So it was always just an issue with the internet, and again, an IP config release renew would solve that problem temporarily. Any machines I have running Windows 7 or Windows 10 had no problems whatsoever, and they would just seemingly work. Then the wireless started having problems, so the tablets and all that other good stuff, um, that stuff started having issues as well, where it would have intermittent connectivity issues, stuff like that, so I said, you know what, let me dumb down the network. So in the interim, uh, previously I had thought the doorbell server was actually causing a problem, and I had it hooked up over this USB to Ethernet adapter, that works with Windows XP on here. So it was limiting the uh, connectivity, even though it's 100 megabits per second, this machine is only USB 1, so it 
dumbed down to basically 6 megabits per second regardless. Uh, and that was the maximum it could handle, and it's old and slow as it is. Well, anyway, uh, that seemed to quell the problem for a while, but again, the problem was back with a vengeance and wouldn't go away. So I said, all right, well, after I got my new router, I failed to realize that my IP address had changed. I thought it had changed earlier, but actually when you replace the router because the MAC address of it is different, uh, the cable modem actually obtains a different IP address from the uh, cable company and the problems seemingly went away. So I thought maybe I had a bad IP address. So I said, all right, well this time, screw it. I'm going to bring the modem back to them. You know, it's like a rental kind of thing. I have no choice in the matter, so I'll bring it back to them and have them replace it. So the old one I had is similar to the one that XJO81X has, which you can actually see in his desk video. It had, uh, like, uh, green and amber LEDs on it, but no, no, we have to have this new one that's smaller, has less lights on it, so nothing looks cool. The old one had blinking lights and all kinds of fancy stuff. These are just on, you know, and they're blue, so you know that's the mark of quality right there. It doesn't tell you a damn thing. You have four solid lights? Yes, I do. Well, your modem's working then, you know, so anyway, we had to have that. The problem is, uh, this modem also handles the voice over IP. Uh, that's where I get my telephone service from. And being that I have a whole bunch of old machines, including some shoddy looking telephone connections here, and these junction boxes, there's two of them, and some cobwebs I need to take care of, uh, there's a whole bunch, you can actually see them in the distance there, a whole bunch of telephone wires that run to all different places in the house, even up here. I had to run phone lines like everywhere in this house, and that was one of the first things I did. Uh, anyways, because this is a newer cable modem with its made in China everything else, just like the old one, uh, the problem I was experiencing now was that with the new modem, if somebody would call, the phone would ring, but it would only give a partial ring. It would just go, and that's it. It wouldn't ring again, it wouldn't do anything else, until finally I just decided to pick the phone up after I heard that, and whoever was calling was on the other end, and I could talk to them no problem until I hung up. Phone rang again, just that little, and that's it. You got nothing else. So what I had to do in the interim was uh, disconnect some of the devices in the house from the phone line to gain back what's called the REN or ringer equivalence that I needed, ringer equivalence number that I needed to uh, allow the rest of the phones to ring. And after I did that, they rang properly, but I want to hook my stuff back up. And that is going to be the subject of another video, which I plan to make uh, as the one following this. Anyways, uh, so I still have this network problem after replacing the modem, and now I have a new problem with the phones. So that's great, replace that, problem still happens. RMA the router, that's under warranty. They replace that, put that in, same problem. All right, now what do I do? Well, the next thing is to start dumbing down the network. So, uh, you know, I can't lose this kind of connectivity, it's just here. I do have a spare switch I could have plugged in to test with, but uh, I didn't want to go through plugging and unplugging all of these cables and that. So I started breaking the network down by segments. So sitting here precariously in the living room is an 8-port D-Link 10100 switch. The reason why a switch is here, because I really don't like doing that, I'd rather run home runs to where it needs to go, is because it started out just with the computer here and this one here is running Windows 10 soon to be downgraded to Windows 7 because 10 is just atrocious just as a quick aside it's sitting here it's on you go to click start why the delay file explorer reasonable fine go click start again short delay settings comes up now it seems to be cooperating but usually it's just too slow to even be useful. And the machine isn't that old. Uh, anyway, I digress. So the machine is here. Then, of course, 
smart TV comes along and all kinds of other stuff. But rather than run more Ethernet drops, if you will, to all the different devices, I just put a switch here for pretty much everything on this wall. So I disconnected this switch from the network, which killed everything on this wall. I let it run for about 24 hours, and the problem persisted. Well, next thing I have on there is a network printer. I disconnected that, waited 24 hours, problem persisted. And here's an old Linksys Wireless G access point. You can see it right there. WAP54G, I believe it is. That was actually the main access point I was using for everything. And Alexa is right here. Hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't find the answer to the question I heard. Well, you can't take her name in vain. Anyways, <laughs> she's right here, so perfect wireless connectivity. Obviously, you'll see that this is currently out. After disconnecting that access point, the problem went away. So I waited 24 hours and everything worked. I plugged the switch back in, waited 24 hours, everything worked. Also, I had a problem with this thing not wanting to work. She would get like a red ring of death and say, I can't, under I'm having trouble understanding right now, please try again later. All kinds of stuff like that, and it was really scary to see. But it turns out it was the access point the entire time. And that is hardwired back to the main switch. That's why you'll notice port 3 is not connected. The cables here, it's just hanging there, it's just slightly pulled out of the socket, and that's it. The access point is powered down, so it doesn't matter if it's plugged in anyway. And the one on the end here is a temporary connection for another network printer, uh, which eventually I'll just integrate into the rest there. So the problem was the wireless access point the entire time. That was bringing down the entire network internet access. Again, anything internal, transferring files between machines, worked perfectly fine the entire time. But internet was a problem, and it was mainly a problem with any machines running Windows XP. Again, the 7 and 10 computers didn't seem to have much of any trouble at all with the internet when that was happening. And that means that people who wanted to listen to my shoutcasts weren't able to do so. And uh, that was a little disheartening because I like to have as much uptime as possible. Now, of course, I know I'm going to get comments like, did you try resetting everything? Um, yeah, I kind of, you know, having a network set up like this, I, I would expect you would think I might have a clue what I was doing. Yeah, I know there's cable, you know, it has cable management issues, but what server room doesn't? Anyways, so uh, this is all set up. Yes, I reset everything umpteen times, and it never made a difference. The problem was that damn access point, and that was the whole thing. So now I'm just left with the telephone issue, which again will be addressed in my next video. So... People were also telling me, oh, call your cable company, have them come out. There's no way they were going to be able to figure this out. No way. I get the most bizarre problems. You can go through seven, eight, nine people that have a pretty good understanding of what's going on with computers and networking and stuff like that. People I trust, okay, because I know what's going on. So for me to be able to trust somebody you know, with their expertise in the field, uh, they pretty much also know what they're doing. And we tried brainstorming a thousand different ideas. Nobody had the solution, and I was left to my own devices to figure out what the hell the problem was. And that was it. So anyway, networking issues are solved. Right now, this is acting as the wireless as well, because it's built into it. And the coverage is just adequate not great so I'll work on an access point in the future when I get back around to it so again all that's left is the phone issue which will be taken care of in the next video thank you so much for watching make sure you click like 
Make sure you click subscribe and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.